Praise the Lord. Please let us pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for this opportunity to hear your word again. Thank you for this opportunity that you have given every one of us to really give ourselves, give your word attention, to really surrender our lives to Jesus Christ, to really understand the meaning of the fact that we are Christians. Thank you, my God, for the message that you have given to every one of us so that we understand what we are doing and where we are getting to the result of our confessions and the meaning of these confessions and the result and effect of obeying or living in accordance with uh, the words of our confessions may your spirit reign supreme as people listening to this message oh god may your spirit reign supreme in their hearts may your spirit reign supreme in their homes may your spirit reign supreme oh god breaking our consciences so that as we listen to this message the consciences of men and women will surely be pricked to the extent that there will be by your grace genuine repentance understanding of your word god may the light of the word that we are about to hear really break through every darkness in our lives and expel every darkness so that jesus christ will indeed reign in us to the glory of your name O god through jesus christ our lord amen thank you again and uh, we are about to listen to a very important message and this message is very crucial the topic you're about to listen to is one i would like you to listen to again and again so that you can indeed assimilate the full meaning of all that is contained in this message the lord bless you as you're listening attentively in the name of jesus christ amen the topic i want us to consider very importantly in this message says confessions without convictions confessions without convictions this message is intended to make the congregation to make everyone become aware of the bitter pit into which so many have fallen many have blindly slided into a very dangerous pit the pit that has been craftily positioned and is craftily manipulated by the enemy the devil the wicked old serpent what is this pit i want us to consider very carefully and very importantly what is that pit that the devil have dug and i want to tell you with every assurance that many people in the church many people in many churches have already slided into this pit and what's of it is that many do not know many are not aware of the fact that they are in a pit you know worshiping in a pit what is this pit i will simply put it this way you know it is the pit of careless disregard for all the richly packaged confessions of faith we make in churches listen to this again it is the pit of careless disregard for all the richly packaged confessions of faith which we make in churches different churches and for this reason of disregard to these confessions i want to say that it is most unfortunate that our society uh, is already suffering the repercussions of coming into the presence of god almost every other sunday or even in private confessions in private uh, prayer time you know, these confessions that we made before god carelessly you know disregarding the personality of the god to whom we are talking to the society is already suffering the repercussion of this disregard what is happening now in the society is one that should cause an alarm in our hearts terrible things are happening terrible experiences whole families are being wiped out you know in car accident in fire accident you know it is happening every day up to about 20 years ago i read a a a, a, a shaking uh, 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 information about the statistics death statistics that we have now that statistics said 
that 50 about 50,000 people dies in the world every minute about 50,000 people dies in the world every minute and mind you that this death rate uh, it's only talking about those deaths that were registered in Africa. Most deaths are not registered, you know. But the, the, the Western world, they are talking about the, re- the deaths that were registered in developed countries or thereabouts. But they are trying to use that to imagine the death rate. What is happening to us in this society where people are now so uncomfortable in everything? You know, people are now so hesitant. You know, there is fear in the air. Fear about everything. When you build your house now, you have to build it and it looks like a prison house. You have to make a very high wall. You have to get a, you know, you have to get heavy rods, iron bars, and lock yourself, jam yourself in every night. But even when you have finished that, any day, the hoodlums will come. You will beg them to give you just a few minutes so that you kindly open up everything that you have locked up. You know, there is no security. There is no joy. There is nothing that tells us again that this place is comfortable. And for people like us, we are not at all comfortable because we look for a city that is not made with hands. That city that Jesus Christ uh, 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 promised us. Now let's come back to this. Remember, the world is suffering already. There is judgment of God in the world upon the world. Because in Romans chapter 1, from verse 18, the Bible says, The wrath of God has been revealed from heaven, it's revealed against all unrighteousness and ungodliness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. They hold the truth in unrighteousness. So as you listen to this topic, confessions without decisions, I want to tell you immediately that this is the problem that we have. You can wonder very uh, well why is it that upon all the churches that has flooded everywhere, you know, different denominations fill everywhere, Orthodox, Pentecostal, and so on, we are richly endowed with different kind of churches that bears different names I am not against any of this per se but what I wonder at really is why is it that upon all the different denominations that we have churches have spread everywhere yet people's characters are not commensurate with what the preacher says on pulpits what they confess to in churches after we have confessed to all these things we ooze out of the church and yet the streets are now filled again with people who behave as if they have never gone to church can you not wonder why is it that it is so why is it that it is now that churches have sprung up everywhere we are richly endowed with all these churches all these denominations you know theological views of different types people are arguing telling about things that are concerning god but my problem is that if indeed our hearts are linked at all to the things that we confess and that we fight for let me tell you our characters in this society would have gotten better it would have been better the society would have been a better place to live in because we have all these churches around but indeed the opposite is the case why it is because people go to church on Sundays they confess to faith they confess our Lord's prayer they confess their sins they confess to a lot of things you know they sing a lot of wonderfully uh, formulated hymns yet their characters show that they have never taken any decision that we back up the things they have confessed to no decision in their hearts no decision has been made to live in accordance to their confessions in accordance with their confessions you confess one thing whereas where is your heart you know i want to tell you quickly that this is the pit into which the church has sunk and you know what is the church the people from the society made up the church and so when we go in there and deceive ourselves we still come out to fill up the whole place the society every nook and cranny with those attitudes that shows that we are in complete disregard to the things that we have confessed to you know let us look at this the bible said in romans chapter 10 in verse 9 the bible said that it is with the mouth that confession is made to unto salvation 
the Bible says, with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. With the mouth now, the confession is made unto salvation. That means that what you have believed in your heart, you now confess it with your mouth. And these two sums up. They, they sum up to, they are equal to, they are regarded as, before God, as salvation to you. When your heart has believed and then your mouth confesses. You know, but the problem is that in churches, the heart has not even believed. The heart that is con- the heart is not yet convinced. The hearts are not yet convicted. Convicted of the sin that their mouth confesses. Yet they make confessions. Now, these confessions, I call them empty, they are baseless, they are useless, they are fruitless. Fruitless confessions that are made. These confessions are made to pastors every Sunday. They are made to pastors uh, during a, a wedding. You know, a man will lead a woman to the altar area and we begin to make promises to God before the pastor saying, because of this woman, I have rejected every other woman. I have given myself to her. I Everything I have is now her own. But look at the whole place. You Let me tell you, I have met youth, children who are already frustrated because of broken homes. The fathers are not keeping to their confession. The confessions they made before pastors when, on the day of their wedding, it is so quick, they are so quick to forget to, because they disregard, they have not even never considered the things they said before God. People are living under causes, they are living under a cause, you know, because you may be having problems in your life. You do this, you are failing. Others will cross a place and when you are about to cross, the bridge will break. You begin to run around and looking for pastors to you know, conduct deliverance for you. We harass, you are suffering because you have failed God terribly. You went before God and promised that you will be faithful to your wife. And you are so unfaithful. And yet, you want somebody to prophesy to you again that it is Mr. A or Mrs. B that is killing you. No, you have destroyed your yourself any of us who have gone before the court to confess anything to make a promise to say god i will do this whereas in your heart you have not even considered what you are saying you are making a terrible mistake going before god to make confessions without any decision you know many homes have been broken children have been rendered useless children have been frustrated the father doesn't care there is a woman outside there that is now more dear to you closer to you than your wife the woman that you went to her father's house and brought out you promised her a lot of things you carried your bible before a pastor before the presence of god and you insulted the glory of god because you made confessions you know promises that you were not even ready at all to obey you you are not even ready at all you are, you are not convicted at all concerning your confessions it is not only marriage when we take children to the baptism front we make promises on behalf of these children what do we do immediately after most of these children are forgotten many do not even remember many do not even think about this they don't even consider they were children they promised god that they were going to bring up you know in the fear of god and hand those children over to god making sure that they grew up in the faith which you on behalf of these children have affirmed to already this is also another problem you come out of these things and you then face problems of life because god the face of god will be against you if you continue to make these wicked i mean to, uh, to, uh, if you continue to you know display this wicked attitude of going before god to tell lies and you think you're making confessions of faith this is the problem that the society is suffering from you know every sunday consider it when you get to the major road on sundays i mean you will notice that the roads are empty because people have gone to church when you travel by that morning hour you will not see anybody that will rebuke you that will rain abusive words on you because those people that does those things are in the church 
they are attending church services if you want to travel you want to do anything on sunday morning it is always better in the streets because the people that will cheat you the 419ers they are no more in the streets why because they have gone to church now come back to the streets around one o'clock or two p.m or four o'clock in the evening you will see the bars open everywhere we be charged with the spirit of sin and loss and fornication and all that cheating and bribery and corruption why is it because the people who have gone to church have just dismissed and they have filled the streets again with different kind of atrocities happening everywhere because they went into church to make confessions that are not backed up with any form of decision the problem we have in our churches is that people come down they kneel down before god they say the lord's prayer confessing our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come but whereas they when they say these things many do not even believe that his kingdom has come or that his kingdom will come they say our father who art in heaven whereas the person calling god our father has something else as his own father you know deep down in your heart that god is not your father how can god father a sinner how can god father somebody who do not have any regard for him then you go to church you say our father who art in heaven we ask you are not ready at all to listen or to give any meditation to his word you are just bringing curses on yourself when you do these things let us go a little further and we will see a place in Matthew chapter 21 reading from verse 28 when you get to verse 32 it is a story of a man who had two sons this man went to his first son and he said to him son go to my vineyard and work for me that first son was very quick to answer to confess to his father he said father I will not this first son was being sincere to the father he knew he didn't like his father he knew that this man was saying something that he didn't want to do he was sincere and he said father look what you're saying i will not do it i will not do it i will not go you know you may say that he was being disobedient but he was first of all being sincere and it was clear to the father immediately that this man this son needed prayer he needed deliverance and you will not be surprised that the father then went in and began to intercede for him i wish that many people that go to church even many people that minister in many churches pastors that minister in many churches that proclaim the word of god and to and the people they proclaim them to do we really believe in what we confess to the people? You people that are being charged with all this faith, do you really believe with what you confess back to God? When you say these things, they are being taken record of. I will prove it to you later. You know, when we say these things before God, we say we believe, we say that we honor Him with our mouth, we honor Him with our song and so on. But do we really believe in our hearts? Are we really convinced? Are we really convicted? Is there a decision in us? Is there that a, a total decision to live by the words which we are confessed to this son he said i will not you know the father went in to pray for him probably saying please save this my son he is dead but there was the second son that second son had a name that he was alive and he was dead you know he had a showmanship he had a show of being a christian whereas he was not he had to display before his father pretentiously that he was a very obedient and loyal child a child that loved the father whereas the opposite was the case as is the case with many so many worshipers you know he said to the father i will you know once the father finished his, his charge he said i will i will do it i will oh you know in our lost prayer we say the same thing father we say your will be done in, on earth as it is done in heaven but when we say this thing do you really mean it do you really want do you really are you really bent on seeing that the will of god will be done in your life and i want to ask very importantly do you even know what is the will of god because many christians do not even search the scriptures many do not even take time to read to research to look into those things that matters you know concerning our faith you know you go to church on sunday you pick the bible to church and immediately after this church service you go home you drop the bible and you do not even open it again many will not open it again from monday until saturday 
the dust will cover the bible from monday to saturday then on sunday morning you will dust your bible very well and put it by your side and begin to march to church as if you are the holiest person on earth and when you hold that bible while marching to church you will discover that you will not like to abuse anybody because the bible is just by your side by the time you get to the church you begin to kneel down and say things that you really do not consider eventually how many people remember the topic the pastor used the last sunday before the next you know how many of us can say we remember the pastor's word in the pastor's uh, 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 topic the very first sunday in the last in the last year hey, i was surprised when that was i know i had to talk to some youth there was a fellowship in the afternoon after sunday morning after sunday worship and uh, you know i had to begin from somewhere i asked them please can any of you tell me with the topic i used the morning in the morning they were boys young boys and girls tell me the topic I used in the morning to preach you know surprisingly to me these young men and women could not give me the topic they had quickly forgotten but I'm sure that even when you have forgotten the topic the pastor used on Sunday morning you still remember the kind of food you ate up to two Sundays ago you can remember it you can remember the kind of clothes you put on the color of the clothes you put on to church service the Sunday before that one but you cannot remember where they read the first lesson where they took the second lesson from you know you cannot even remember the pastor topic again why because you just carry your bible to church as an angel and by the end of the day many discovers they they are still empty why because they have not taken time to consider those things they are going to church for you go to confess the lost prayer confess your sin confess this and that but uh, there are decisions already in your life to live for god to give your life to Jesus Christ to surrender yourself unto the Lord have you really taken the decision without the decision the confessions are baseless and they are useless fruitless they will bear no fruit so the second son said father I will please as you listen to this message if the side gets finished up I want you to have the patience to continue with us in the other side God bless you the second son said I will whereas when he was saying he will in his heart he was rather telling the father i'm just saying this thing because now yes i'm saying it you know i just have to say it because you're my father but i know indeed what i want to do in my heart when you go to church and say father i will when you go to church and say i surrender my life to jesus when you answer that altar call whereas you have not shown anything for it when you were answering it don't you know that you are now behaving like this son who said i will but the bible recorded that eventually he did not go he didn't go he said father i will but he didn't go whereas the first son whereas he said i will not the bible recorded thank you welcome again to this side so the bible record concerning the first son that afterward he repented and when he repented he went in and did the work the father wanted him to do but listen very carefully when he repented listen he didn't go back to his father to say father now i will you know it is a surprising thing you know the first son was quick to say i will but he did not but the first one said i will not but eventually he repented and then he went and did it i have observed carefully that many people are quick to answer in agreement to a a, a contract you know but whereas they are quick to answer in affirmation so also they are also so quick to fail in the things they have you know they have promised the things they have agreed in, they have agreed to do they fail quickly they breach the contract whereas there are people who take time to meditate to think and ponder 
over the things they are about to say in churches it would have been better for people to stop all these confessions and uh, rather meditate first of all and they ponder seriously over the words of the creeds and the promises and prayers that they say on Sundays every, every uh, 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 you know in every worship I wish rather that there would be quiet time some time devoted for meditation during church service and I, 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 I wish that people will rather use one hour to meditate upon the word of God after the sermon before we begin to dance to the gospel band beat. You know, coming and dancing up as if we understood what the pastor said on the pulpit. That is when you have to always know many people after service, you meet them along the way. You say, how was it? How did the pastor perform? They say, how? Huh? it was wonderful that man really spoke he spoke wonderfully in fact he is wonderful they will so praise the word of god then the surprising thing and it is a very funny aspect of the whole thing you now ask him then what did you gather out of all the things he said he will only reply the things he said are many oh, they are many they were wonderful the man was too much <laughs> but the problem is that this same person that is praising the man of god praising the word of god will not show anything there would be nothing in his life to show for that word which he had if indeed the many wonderful sermons we are hearing in churches have gotten down to us there would have been revival all the way there would have been great revival but people disregard these things they only love i will read to it i will read a place to you in the book of ezekiel chapter 33 read it from verse 30 listen very carefully to what god said as for you son of man the children of your people are talking about you beside the walls and in the doors of their houses and they speak to one another everyone saying to his brother listen very carefully please come and hear what the word is that comes from the Lord so they come to you as a people do they sit before you as my people and they hear your words but they do not do them for with their mouths they show much love but their hearts pursue their own gain oh god verse 32 says indeed you are to them as a very lovely song of one who has a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument oh god for they hear your words but they do not do it that is there their spirits have gone out elsewhere i cannot explain what's happening but we know that something has gone very wrong why is it that people are now regarding the word of god as a mere beautiful song and ah, that man spoke so well and what is your life showing for it what is your life showing for it look at all the crusades that holds every easter look at all the crusades that holds every christmas look at all the we set apart look at all the retreats that holds in churches men and women of different types of, of, of all walks of life children youths they are dead but oh god what is happening after that people have listened to the word of god they still go back to their ancient life to their old life you know what the bible said in the book of colossians chapter 3 says put off the old man that is the important thing after we have listened to the word of god may the word of god lead us to the point of putting off something take away something depart from iniquity put off the old man and put on the new man jesus christ to whom have been preached to you god complained to ezekiel that they come this is exactly what is happening in our churches they come they hear the word they want to listen they listen as if they are a people that wants to hear that are ready to do the will of god now that is why i suggest there should be a time for meditation there should be a time for meditation i wish there could be some time devoted to meditation on the word of god rather than to so many vain and decisionless confessions that are recklessly repeated every sunday in psalms chapter 119 verse 130 david said there the entrance of your word 
giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. Listen to this quotation again. The entrance, the entrance of the word of God giveth light. It is not the hearing only of the word that will give light to your life. The Bible said it is the entrance. When the word of God has successfully really penetrated, when the word of God has successfully really, you know, sank deep down and touched the basic foundation of your life, shaking your life from the very foundation so that there will be a major fundamental, you know, change, fundamental facelift. That is what the Bible meant when it said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. But we know very well that this is not the case with so many church attenders. You know, people who attend the church on Sundays and make these confessions. Confessing to our Lord's prayer, praying for the grace of God and receiving the benediction on Sundays. These things they do not consider. You know, because indeed, many old things have not passed away. In fact, in so many people's lives, not nothing old has even passed away. You know, the Bible says, new wine for new wine's king. But people are drinking this new wine of the word of God in the same old wine skin of the old wicked nature. They seem to want to contain the word of God in their old nature. You know, nothing desirable in the old nature. Yet, this promise, this is a wonderful word of God, prize the word of God. This great word of God is try and they try to contain this word in that their old nature. This thing cannot work. Look at it. The Hebrew word that was translated entrance in Psalm 119 verse 130. That Hebrew word is Peter. And that word means disclosure. It means disclosure. That is the disclosure of your word gives light. Disclosure. When the word of God is disclosed, like the rays of the sun is, dis is disclosed as it breaks through the dark clouds of the previous night. The rays of the sun, they are normally in the morning. You see them being disclosed. In the, through the night, they break into the world. And it is only when they, are dis, uh, when they break through and are disclosed that they are able to give us light. But the problem that we have is that this word of God in so many hearts broken through you may be somebody who have listened to this word for 30 years yet the word of god has not succeeded in breaking through the darkness of your behavior the darkness of the life the word of god has not breaking through into your hope that is why there is so much atrocities happening in there that is why somebody is using his wife as a punching bag whereas he is crowned a greatly important name in the church he has been given a place of honor he has even been anointed to do one job or the other in the church yet in his house nothing shows for it there is fighting everywhere there is abusive words everywhere nothing shows for it you know they will definitely remain in that darkness in that disobedience in the midst of the broadly light until they take a decision to open the doors and windows to the word that has been spoken and to the confessions they make in churches that is only the time that word will come in being disclosed in their hearts and then there will be light let us try to explain this more the word have not entered there is no evidence in the life of so many confessionists that the light of the world is inside the house people still group in the darkness of fornication and seduction Look at our girls in the streets. They show for sure that the world have not yet penetrated. Some of these girls, they are in the choir of many churches. Most of these girls are choristers. Many of them are members of the gospel band. Many of them are different things in churches. They do different services in churches. But when you meet them on the major road, on Monday or in, I mean on Friday, you will not believe that these girls, that they have smelled any place in the church. Yet, their parents hold important positions in churches. 
their parents hold important position in churches they are so recognized and so respected in churches yet their people their children are naked in the streets that is the problem you know seducing spirits you know i wonder do these parents what have we been doing that you know have given the devil the opportunity you know to children you know to the extent that they can afford to come to church get to the altar area open their hands and receive the consecrated and holy body and blood of jesus christ the son of god and still come back to your home to your place and put on all these wickedly devised hot men naked they come out from your home every part of their womanhood portraying pointing to all directions they will come out and you know that they were dressed to kill somebody dressed to put somebody down dressed up in order to mess up the society